Allegis Global Solutions presents the Subject to Talent podcast, a hub for global workforce leaders to unleash the power of human enterprise. Thank you for listening in as we explore the most innovative and transformational topics impacting business today. Hi, I'm Bruce Morton, the host of the Subject to Talent podcast. Today, I'm joined by Doug Halka. Doug is the Vice President of Business Development at Globality, the market leader in autonomous procurement and sourcing. Doug, thanks for joining me today. Good morning, Bruce. Good to be with you as well. Thanks. Awesome. So here on Subject to Talent, we always ask, start, start by asking the same question, and that is, how did you get where you are? So how did you get started in the procurement industry, and what was your journey to get to this point? <laughs> well, yeah, uh, yeah, journey's been kind of a winding road. That, that said, I spent the bulk of my career in the professional services space uh, in, in various roles from you know, service delivery, sales and business development, uh, running various uh, service lines and business units. And, uh, you know, the first real exposure I got to to seeing the opportunity in workforce strategy and management, uh, I was working with Accenture. At the time, I was running a couple of portions of Accenture's operations business, specifically procurement outsourcing and HRO outsourcing engagements. And, and that's where I really saw the disconnect that existed between you know, HR and procurement within these organizations. And I got to see firsthand the real disconnect in decision-making between hiring talent and, and what I call buying or renting talent, which is, you know, do you go out and hire someone or do you go out and do you hire, do you hire a, a, a firm or, or a contractor, right? And I realized, you know, there's a real problem to solve there. Great. And then, so how long have you been with Globality now? Yeah. So I've been with Globality about four years, uh, just over four years now. And uh, it's been a pretty amazing journey. Uh, and the the growth of AI and what we've seen happen with with uh, you know, we call Glow is our AI engine, right? And the growth of Glow over those four years has been pretty dramatic. Yes, let's get into that because uh, regular listeners will hopefully remember we had your colleague uh, Keith Hausman, who's your chief customer officer, back on here about a couple of years ago now when we first launched our partnership. And now you know, well, just to underline that, you know, obviously this partnership empowers us to utilize that AI powered platform to deliver our customers a great um, procurement solution, you know, to really get the most value out of that spend. But can you just give our listeners a brief overview of how the product has evolved in the last couple of years? Yeah, it's a great question. Um, it's been pretty amazing and fun to watch. I'd say the the examples are pretty vast, but there's probably two main areas where, you know, I've seen the greatest advancements. You know, firstly is is the ability of AI to to digest the the data and the spend and the number of events that we're running on platform and to be able to use that data to really act as a procurement advisor for the business users, right? You know, the more AI gets access to more data, more spend, more events, you know, she really gets smarter around all aspects of the sourcing process right. from supplier identification and matching. You know, learning best fit suppliers and, and not be, not just best fit suppliers for for a particular project, but for the individual user, right? Tailoring that end user experience, you know, and also you know, Glow's ability to to analyze responses and provide insights for things like negotiation assistance. You know, it's really freeing up people from you know time consuming tasks and allowing them to focus on areas of value creation. And then secondly, I'd say, which is really the more exciting aspect is, is the, the introduction of, of generative AI and the advancement we've seen in generative AI. And, and as we continue along the curve of autonomous sourcing and enabling true self-service, the ability for Glow to generate content has really pr- pr- proven to be invaluable for stakeholders. You know, Glow's ability to learn from her experiences on platform and then generate content for stakeholders to use and edit is really helping them with generating fast, efficient, accurate SOWs and RFPs. Right. And I know you talk about um, being the platform being built AI up and not jumping on the bandwagon of ChatGPT4. So I, I think that's a really, really important point um, for our listeners to hear. So can you just talk about that for a minute? Yeah. Um, yeah. So Globality is about eight years old. We've been building this platform um, with an AI up um, approach, right? So, so everything, the way that data is all connected, the way that user experience uh, on the, on the front end and the suppliers are experiencing, um, interactions with the platform. It's, it's really built with, with AI from the ground up. There's a lot of 
you know, companies out there that are bolting AI on top of their current solution, which is providing a user interface, but that really affects how the data is interconnected and, and the platforms of, and, and their solution or our solution's ability to connect data, provide responses, analyze the data, analyze responses, and to really generate an end-to-end experience for, for business users, for procurement, and for business stakeholders. Right. So the, and the reason I brought that up is that I think, you know, organizations are at different points of maturity or different points on the fear versus opportunity spectrum when it comes to all things AI. And I, I know that you're able to bring, use AI without those risks that an organization will necessarily be taking by, you know, simply, let's call it using chat GPT. So if, if you look at this through, the prospects that you speak to and the customer lens, how have those conversations evolved over the last couple of years? One with them, AI is starting to get in the public domain. So perhaps they start understanding it, but there's also that risk and fear as well. So how have those conversations altered? Yeah, well, it, it's uh, it's interesting. You know, when I first got here, um, you know, I guess four years ago or so, and I would call on on people I knew, right? People in the industry, people I had great relationships with and would talk about, you know, our platform and the use of AI. And, you know, they would, the responses were all over the place, but they generally all fell along the lines of, hey man, stop selling me snake oil, right? <laughs> uh, this AI is not real. It doesn't exist. Right. And, you know, it's funny, like, I mean, all, almost to a person, they're all calling me back now and they're all saying, hey, uh, I'm getting questions from my leadership around, you know, what's the strategy for using AI? And can, can we, can we talk now? And, you know, what are you guys doing? And tell me more about it. Um, so, so the AI conversation is, is is coming to the forefront. You know, we're seeing you know this be a board level discussion. We're seeing you know leadership talking about you know how are we going to use AI within our within our organization. And and you know it's it's getting a lot of traction. I think it's all based beyond the heels of of Chat GPT and and what that's created in the consumer world, right? And you know, there's a lot of there's a lot of buzz around Chat GPT, and and, and you know, rightly so. You know, people have access to it. It's free. Uh, it's fun to play with. But you know, one of the things I I, I talk to people about, or you know, in the business world, is you know, be careful because there's a vast difference between the consumer version of AI and enterprise AI. You know, and we could probably spend the entire time talking about that alone. But but I say the most important thing that people need to realize is is there are differences in data security and partitioning and the scale. Of, of the AI engines, you know, in particular, you know, for business use, people need to be careful not to disclose things like, you know, trade secrets, confidential information, competitive advantages, right? And, and you need to be cognizant of the source data that's training the AI, right? With, with chat GPT and other consumer AIs, it's learning from every interaction on the platform. And, you know, every person that goes in there is just playing around with it. It's learning from that, right? And so, you know, if you're relying on that to solve your business problems, you know, you're at risk because someone's gone in there and trained the AI with maybe zero context around what the problem is that you're trying to solve. And the AI has learned from that interaction, the other interactions. Right. That's a really interesting point. And you mentioned this getting traction at the board level. Um, so if we looking through a procurement lens, I... Do you think there was a, I mean, there were certainly plenty of articles out there about procurement using AI and being more innovative and so on. Are you, is that your experience that you're seeing, um, you know, this giving procurement leaders an opportunity to actually use AI, but not, as you said, have those risks of bringing chat GPT inside the walls? Yeah. Yeah. It's a great question. We, we are seeing that occur um, and we're, we're seeing it across our customers almost every one of them, but, but there are some specific examples that kind of jump out to me. You know, we, we had one, um, large financial institution that, um, their CEO attended the CEO roundtable um, with other leaders in the tech industry. And, you know, these, these tech leaders were saying, you know, basically, you know, you've got to get on board with AI because it's coming and it's real and it's going to affect your business. And, and this CEO came back and, and brought her leadership team together and said, you know, hey, like I looked at every person in the room and said, you know, what's your AI strategy? How are you going to use it going forward? And, you know, our, our CPO raised their hand and he said, you know, I, I've been using AI for over a year now. And she was amazed that it had been deployed. And he started talking about the benefits and how they were getting 20% savings 
They were saving 50% um, man hours and they were getting reduced cycle times of up to 80%, which means the business was getting what they need faster with less effort from procurement. Um, and that has really elevated elevated his role within that organization. It's put him in a positive spotlight. He's now having you know weekly or biweekly debriefs with the CEO on you know the results and how the AI is being deployed and and, and things like that. So um, you know it, it's it's been pretty amazing to watch how those customers of ours that are putting this at the forefront of their of their strategy is putting them in a really positive light internally. That's great. And you mentioned the, you know, let's get very tactical for a moment. So at, at desk level, if somebody is using your platform to generate an, an SOW and then go out and find the, you know, the development vendors and everything else, it, what's the impact that's having? You know, how would you compare that to pre-AI and pre-globality? What, what are some of those data points? Yeah. Um, so, so if you think about the traditional sourcing process. Well, you know, first we'll start out with, you know, the typical tension that exists between procurement uh, and what I'll call the business, right? Somebody's out in the business, they need to buy something, hire a firm to do something, right? There's this constant tension between someone that's trying to run a business and get something done, right? And 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 time is their enemy, right? They need to get something done, you get something quickly. And, you know, procurement's got the the pressure of they need to introduce compliance and, and visibility and savings and all those things that are important to the business, but they're kind of the enemy of speed, right? And so what we often see is someone in the business say, I don't have time to go to procurement because they're going to introduce their their sourcing process, right. which is going to take me months to get something done, right? Whereas with our platform, that business user can now come on the platform and draft a body of work, right? Define what it is that they need to buy in as little as 20 to 25 minutes. Um, and then with the click of a button, they can be shown suppliers that the business has already approved to do that type of work, which means contracting is expedited, right? That means right. that they know they've got a quicker path to getting that firm or getting that, that that good that they need, you know, into the building as quickly as possible, you know, but it also introduces competition, right? Which means they're getting a better solution. You've got firms that are competing for the business, so they're getting better solutions for a better price. And they're doing it in a fraction of the time that it would take during the typical sourcing process, right? So so by a function of our platform making it fast and easy for that business stakeholder to get what they want, procurement is getting what they want, which is compliance to preferred supplier lists, savings, transparency, visibility, efficient contracting, et cetera. Right, that's that's awesome. Thanks for that detail. I think the um, let's look at the other end of the spectrum here, the human end of you know versus generative AI. And I, I'll take this opportunity of a quick plug that I know your colleague Matt is going to be uh, speaking. Oh, we've got a AGS live event coming up on November the fifteenth to explore generative AI in the future of work and how it, how we see that impacting now and in the future. But on that, one of the topics I know that's going to come up on there is. What is the human impact of generative AI? So, that, so let me ask you that question. What do you see how humans will be impacted or how generative AI, in, particularly in the areas of procurement, what are some of those changes we're going to be seeing or are seeing? Yeah. Um, so I think there's a couple of elements. You, you know, One, you know, there's this fear out there that AI is going to eliminate the need for people. And, and you know, we're, we're, we're not seeing that come to fruition. We're seeing the exact opposite. We're seeing what it's really doing is allowing humans to be more human and interact with other humans, right? So what, what, what the AI right. is doing is it's really automating and eliminating time-consuming, laborious tasks, um, such as you know identifying suppliers um, it, it, on our platform, comparing proposals side by side, creating that side by side comparison that you know typically can take you know anywhere from twenty to forty hours for a person to copy and paste stuff out of different documents into one, right? Right. And highlight there. Like, yeah. <laughs> I mean, it, and, and and again, that's not necessarily fun work. It's time consuming yeah. work, and it's often done by very valuable resources, but it's not adding yeah. value to the organization. So by using AI to automate a lot of this, right? Now people are, are elevating their role to working with other people to figure out 
you know, okay, now that AI, now this platform is showing us likenesses and differences between these suppliers, let's talk about how we evaluate them, right? Let's talk about the credentials. Let's talk about which of these suppliers you want to work with and why, right? On the back end, it's like, what's our negotiation strategy, right? Procurement's now working with the business stakeholder to figure out what's really important to you and how can we expedite this negotiation process to get these people working on your project sooner. Um, and so, again, we don't see AI as a threat. We see AI as an enabler for people to do more and to focus more on those human interactions, which which AI isn't really good at. AI is not, it doesn't form a bond. It's just automating these tasks. Right. I like to say, stop getting your humans to do jobs of robots, right? It's not the robots are taking our jobs. It's they're doing what they should be doing. Right. Um, it's a great way to put it. Yeah. And I think that, I think one of the challenges when, as an industry, any industry, when you introduce efficiency and effectiveness tech, and and then you get that, well, yeah, that's just soft savings because those people, I still would employ those people, they're doing something differently, but how do I really measure the impact that's having? You, have you been able to get into that through seeing some real tangible results from your clients in terms of, the level of savings perhaps by using the tool. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, there's a few levers that, that we talk about with clients when we talk about tangible results. Um, you know, and, and some of them are, are quantifiable and measurable and some of them are, but, but, but in generally, in generally speaking, we're seeing one, an increase in spend under management, right? And what that does is that obviously leads to savings, leads to compliance to preferred supplier lists. It reduces risk in the organization because you're buying from suppliers that you know and you trust. You're also getting SOWs that are measurable so you can hold suppliers accountable to, to outputs and outcomes versus just giving them open-ended you know, ability to work you know, on, on a time and materials basis with no end in sight. Um, and, you know, measurably speaking, we're seeing savings in the 20% range. Um, we're being told by our by most of our our procurement users or procurement leaders that they're seeing about a doubling of their procurement's team ability to do work, meaning they're managing about double the number of events with globality than they were before globality. Um, and from a, I talked earlier about about cycle times, which is an important one because when you reduce cycle times, you're giving the business confidence that running a compliant process doesn't slow them down from doing what they need to do. And so seeing that cycle time reduction of up to 80%, you know, is is now enabling the business to move at pace while reducing risk for the business um, and generating savings in the process. Right. Great points. Great points. And the if we think about the change of behavior that this needs to create, um, because this is obviously it's all about change management for the majority of those buyers have, have been buying professional services probably have been reliant on their suppliers actually writing the SOW, yeah. you, right? Right. So now we're saying, no, we're not doing that because we want it to a great point. It needs to be measurable. So let's make sure it's a good SOW, well written and not very, that's some real me- um, measurement milestones in there. So how have you seen across your client base, um, what are the what are those more successful companies from an adoption and change management perspective? What have they been doing well compared to the the other end of the spectrum? Yeah. Um, so I think it starts with leadership and messaging at the top first and foremost. Um, you know, those organizations that are adopting this at scale, they're doing it across the enterprise. They're they're making it as a new way of doing business. You know, versus you know, we we have we have some customers that want to put their toe in the water. Uh, they want to use it, you know, just within a small part of their business first. So they want to do it kind of behind, you know, a wall where they don't want to introduce their stakeholders to it. You know, a lot of times we hear, "Hey, the business isn't ready for this. We don't want to we don't want to put this in the hands of our stakeholders because they're not going to want to use new technology." You know, to which I say, you know. Those people are ready for this. I mean, if you think about how we're using technology in our daily lives, right? We're doing everything on our phone, right? We're we're buying cars on our phones now. We're, we're applying for mortgages on our phones, right? And, and AI is all around us. Everyone's using Alexa. Everyone's using Siri. Everyone's using Google. Um, I think I think we underestimate 
that business stakeholder's ability to, to engage with technology and to want to do things in a self-serve capacity, right? If you think about in your personal lives now, how people are doing self-service for things like payroll, benefits, banking, all of these things that people expect in their personal lives from a self-serve perspective, we need to turn around and give them those same capabilities and those same benefits within the business world, right? And so those those organizations that are embracing that self-serve mentality, empowerment mentality, and pushing it out into the business are the ones that are being the most successful. That's great. And I love the line you use that you know, we're changing the way we do business. This is not a procurement initiative or anything else, right? It's, it, we're literally changing the way we do business. We're using the tools that are available. And, and as you said, it, in our real world, in our normal you know, day-to-day lives, we're embracing this stuff. So that's, that's a great, great point. So thanks for that, Doug. Um, we're coming rapidly to the end of our time now, so that's going really quickly. Um, but we do like to ask all of our guests, uh, you know, the the crystal ball question. So here it comes. You know, if you had that crystal ball, um, pick a time for yourself. I, you know, you pick your own number of years. How do you see procurement will have changed, particularly, and how work's getting done? That's those changes have been caused by AI. You know, if I had a crystal ball, I, I probably wouldn't use it to predict for German. I'd, I'd get the little lottery numbers, so we wouldn't be having this conversation. But, but if I had a crystal ball that could only look through a lens of procurement. Yeah, that's the go. There you go. It's a special crystal ball. Special crystal ball. Um, you know, I, so I guess there's a couple of things. In terms of, you asked a question about timeline. I mean, in terms of time frame, I mean, it's happening now, right? I mean, we're seeing it come to life every right. day, right? Yeah. And, Things that used to take weeks or even months, you know, and, and hundreds of man hours are happening in seconds with with zero effort, right? And, and, and everybody's benefiting, right? I mean, the business users getting what they need faster, procurement's getting those savings and the compliance and visibility that we talked about. I mean, suppliers are benefiting, right? They're spending less time responding to meaningless RFPs and they're spending less yeah, time on administrative tasks mm-hmm. of filling out templates. And they're spending more time on the qualitative aspects of differentiating their product and their solution. So, you know, it's happening now. Everyone's benefiting from this now. But as as for what's to come, I mean, it's it's pretty vast and it's pretty amazing and, and, and it's it's somewhat endless. But but I see really efficient markets. I see predictive modeling around things like workforce management and planning, uh, should cost, predictive pricing. I mean, there's there's real-time supply chain visibility. There's predictive planning and supply chain. I mean, we're really just getting started. I mean, the, the opportunities for AI are endless, and the opportunities for people working with that, that with, within AI are, are limitless. That's awesome. Thanks, Doug. And we're truly excited about that, and we couldn't be uh, more excited about having a great partner to go on that journey with. So we'd really appreciate everything you do and your organization do in, in our partnership, and we're definitely all reaping benefits from it. So um, for those folks that'd like to know more about Globality, um, the blinding the obvious question, how do they how do they find out more about the organization? Well, they can go to globality.com where we've got uh, an interactive website. People can you know see demos of the platform. They can learn more about what we do and they can see uh, about the future of AI and procurement. Great. Thanks, Doug. Thank you so much for your time today. Great. Thanks for having me, Bruce. We appreciate the partnership and we're looking forward to working together. If you enjoyed this episode, please rate and review us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts. And if you have questions, send them to subject to talents at leadersglobalsolutions.com. Follow us on LinkedIn with the hashtag subject to talent and learn more about AGS at allegisglobalsolutions.com, where you can subscribe to receive additional workforce insights. Until next time, cheers. <laughs>